Hi, this is Elle and welcome to my channel. Uh, I'm studying for USMLE myself, so I thought maybe I should be able to help others who are studying for it too. And um, I will start with GI, GI Physiology, GI Embryology, because it's very, very high yield on the boards. Now, for GI Physiology, sorry, GI Embryology, um, the whole GI system develops within the first 12 weeks of pregnancy and so that's the first trimester. And it's divided into foregut, midgut, and the hindgut. Now, what defines foregut or from which area to which area is foregut? It's from the mouth to the second part of the duodenum. So from the mouth to, to the duodenum to the second part of the duodenum is the foregut. And the midgut, starting from the second part of the duodenum all the way to the splenic, splenic flexure. And the hindgut is from the splenic flexure to the anus. Now this is, I'm going to come back to it because there is certain um, clinical associations with these uh, different parts and so I'm going to come back to that. But before I continue on some of the clinicals, I want to go over the blood supply. Um, it's also very high yield to know the blood supply for the three different regions because they are different. For the foregut is the celiac artery okay for the midgut it's the superior mesenteric artery and for the hindgut it's the inferior mesenteric artery it's very very distinct so embry embryologically it's it's that's the way it is now now going back to what I was talking about in terms of um, some of the clinical questions that can come um, according to the different parts of the GI. So for, for, the, for, the, for the foregut, we know that it goes to the second part of the duodenum. Uh, one thing that we have to know is even though the foregut gives rise to the GI tract, it also gives rise to another organ. So can you guess which one it is? Okay, you're right, it's the respiratory tract or the respiratory system also develops from the, from the foregut. So if, if you see any, any association between GI and the lungs, don't be surprised because they have the same embryological background. And for the midgut, like I mentioned that it is from the second part of the duodenum to the splenic flexure. There is a lot of lot of lot of um, clinical questions which comes from this splenic flexure which is kind of the little corner where it's between the midgut and the hindgut. It's where the, the superior mesenteric artery ends and the inferior mesenteric artery begins. So there's not a very very direct blood supply to that little corner. So there is a lot of physiology. So for example, if someone says that a um, um, 70 year old man suffering from atherosclerosis comes to the hospital for upper left upper quadrant pain, then some of the things that you think about is one of the things is you know it could be infarction of the splenic flexure because of atherosclerosis that blood supply is going to that particular region. Another clinical uh, association with midgut so sorry I'm going to be a little more organized here so we talked about splenic flexure so keep that in mind when you are um, talking about talking about Midgut, so sorry, I think my spelling is wrong. Now, another thing with the midgut association that we'd want to talk about is the whole rotation. Um, 
So the GI develops in the yolk sac, okay? And then it has to come out of the yolk sac into the abdominal cavity. And that takes a 270 degree rotation of the midgut as it migrates from the yolk sac into the abdominal cavity. So there is the midgut migration that's also important. Now there is a pathology which is uh, which sometimes doesn't allow this migration to happen and that is if the dining arms are not you know not proper or they're not working well then this midgut mid -gut rotation is not going to happen because of um, ineffective ciliary action. So that's another thing that's that's a direct pathology that is related to the midgut rotation. So these are the people who will suffer from diseases like Cartagener, Cartagener syndrome, where um, they have um, they have dextrocardia or heart on the right side of the body, and their midgut is not going to rotate. They're going to be infertile because of the cilia, of the sperms not moving. Um, they're not going to be able to conceive in females because of the same problem. And one term I would like you to um, remember here is situs inversus, which just means that the right is on the right, uh, uh, the heart is on the right side rather than the left side. So, and it could also another term you could also see with this is dextrocardia. So that is uh, primarily mid-gut and some of the pathologies this is, that is associated with mid-gut. And lastly, the hindgut, which is from the splenic flexure all the way to the anus. Um, and again, like I said, that it has that association with the splenic flexure and the ischemic, infer and the, the ischemic infarcts, which is related to the splenic flexure. Now... Something I have not mentioned yet is um, is the fluid system of the uh, or the amniotic fluid of the GI tract. Um, where the where does the amniotic fluid come from uh, in a child? And it has a lot to do with embryology. It has a lot to do with GI. Um, so. I want to mention that the that 80% of the amniotic fluid, so 80% of the amniotic fluid is coming from the mother. Okay. Now this is also the time you should ask yourself that what is amniotic fluid? It's nothing. It's but the filtrate of the mother's plasma. So it's nothing but the filtrate. of mother's plasma. Now you must be wondering why it's 80%, why it's not 100%, why the entire amniotic fluid is not 100%, it's only 80%. It's because the 20% is actually provided by the child itself. Okay, um, The 20% is actually added by the fetus and um, and here is another area where there is a lot of pathologies, pathology association. Um, what happens is when the mother is secreting this amniotic fluid, the child must, must swallow this amniotic fluid, must, must, must absorb, must digest, and urinate it out. And while urinating it out, the child has to, or the fetus has to, add 20% to to that filtrate and um, and that actually makes the entire um, entire hundred percent of the amniotic fluid I'm going to discuss more about the amniotic fluid in my next video thank you